Gig Gab, the show for working musicians, episode 295 for Monday, March 8th, 2021. Folks, and welcome to Gig Gab, the show by, for, and about working musicians, as usual, here in Durham, New Hampshire. I'm Dave Hamilton. Here in Napomo, California, it's Paul Kent. I, um, how you doing today, Mr. Paul Kent? <laughs> I'm doing pretty good. Good. I, um, we it had an interesting, it, I had one of those rock meets theater moments yesterday, which reminded me of my own rock meet theater moment like seven years ago when I had gotten back into theater, we were sitting down to do the first of two uh, next to normals. And Mike, our guitar player, who's uh, uh, if you played with him in a rock band, you'd never know that there was more to him than just being a rock guitar player. Like he completely embodies that role. Right. Mm -hmm. But he's also, uh, I mean, he's a music teacher. He knows more theory than most people I know. He can read music. He can write music. I mean, like he has all these other things that, that classify him technically as, you know, musician in so many different ways, but he's a rock guy for sure. And, uh, as we're sitting down getting ready, he, he looks at me and he's like, this is the show. And he's like, this is the one, this is going to be great. The great one. And I'm like, Oh, you're really doing it. Like you're, you, he's pointing to the outfield, like, you know, before he swings the bat. And, uh, and that's a very rock and roll thing to do. And I know that that's a very rock and roll thing to do because I said that at one point during our the first run I did seven years ago, Next to Normal, and everybody in the theater looked at me like I had just like shot their dog or something. Like, you don't say that. Like, they're like, you just jinxed us. And, he, and Mike, and I was like, that's great. Somebody else said to him, you just jinxed us. He's like, no. He's like, I came in. I'm prepared. I feel good. Like, this is going to be the one. Like, that's right. <laughs> There's nothing wrong with that. And there is. Mm -hmm. and, and we played great. It, it upped everybody's game. It was like everybody was playing to, you know, to hit that mark that Mike had set. So it was, it's a good thing to do. It was nice to have that moment. Um, Excellent. Yeah. Yeah. It's good. I don't know. Something to do. Hey, so um, yesterday was a momentous day. Yesterday was the one year anniversary of the last House Rockers gig. It's been a year. Right. We've had gotten together one time for a rhythm section only rehearsal. We've had three or four group Zoom chats. We have our our um, our um, Slack channel, you know, where we kind of yeah post things that are going on. Uh, right now, we have two guys getting their first vaccines this week. Nice, and I'm kind of keeping a little tally, you know, for the guys. And uh, you know, as we've been saying the last couple of weeks, things are starting to move towards opening up, and we've been advocating for a bunch of different planning for people to get ready for that, like to start calling your your, you know, your booking contacts and to start thinking, I think, you know, you and I originally said by September, I remember I told you that I booked a gig for September 19th and you said, Oh, you'll, you'll do that gig. Yeah. And then a couple of weeks after that was, which was right around election where it seemed like not a lot was happening. It was up in the air as to whether we would be playing in September. Sure. And now, you know, two and a half million people in the, in the U S a week are getting vaccinated and it seems like it's picking up steam. I think My it's two and a half million a day. Rain. A day, yes. I'm yeah. Sorry. Um, and so it seems like it's picking up steam. And now, I, you know, I don't know about you, but I'm thinking June is possible. Oh, May yeah. May is still yeah. questionable, but June things outdoors for bands. Now, me as a solo guy, I've been getting, um, I've been getting some solo gigs, and you know, I'm happy to share. I got a, my third. Uh, uh, venue down here started booking me. So I, I just booked three gigs at a, at a winery in Buelton that I'm, that I'm really excited about. Nice. So, so things are starting to fill in down here, but and getting my in, band together. Yeah, I, to remind or to tell everyone who hasn't been listening for a while, not only are these your first gigs as the pandemic is sort of, you know, the, the beginning of the reemergence, but it's also your first gigs in that area. So it's not like you had contacts right. there. You didn't just get to call your old stomping grounds and be like, Hey, right. I'm ready. So that's impressive. Like that, comes, yeah. like, yeah. <laughs> Thank you. Yeah. yeah. So the master plan about, you know, I'm, I'm three hours away from where I have all my booking contacts and those things I'm, I'm just kind of mining. And if, if you remember the plan was last summer to have our usual very full summer of outdoor events 
um, you know, play as much as we possibly can, even if I was moved down here, which I ended up being. But, you know, I wanted to go through another like real intense, you know, playing 12, 15 times a month, you know, with my band. It's kind of, you know, before we kind of change our strategy to only picking the best of those gigs and really focusing more on on corporate and, and wedding stuff, right? Sure. So, so if I'm going to make a three-hour drive, it needs to be a financial thing, right? Yeah. So, so that was the plan. That all got blown up when everything in the summer of 2020 went away. So, so now we're at 2021. And like I said, you know, you and I have kind of gone through this holding hands like, oh, yeah, fall will be fine. Oh, what's going on? No, you know, like the vaccines are broken. So, you know, maybe not fall, maybe not till 2022. You know, we had, you know, we had our, my friend Brad Maddox and was asking, you know, did, as he is his phone ringing, I haven't heard from Brad in a while to know if he's picking anything up that, you know, any planning is going on. Mm. But that said, there seems to be a light at the end of the tunnel. The clouds are clearing all, all the metaphors you want to use. Um, and so I'm on this process to get my band, my business reopened. And I'm, I'm aiming for a, what I'm calling a frictionless reopening. A lot of things have changed. Sure. I'm sure there are some guys in my band and, you know, they'll listen to this and this is not going to be news to them who are, we'll, we'll see Paul, if you're really going to make the drive and keep the band together. I mean, I, I, I think okay. they want to believe it, yeah. but, but you know, that's healthy a, skepticism because it's fair- their time. Yeah, no, I, like, yeah, and that's a fair position to have. Like, oh, you know, like, like you said, healthy skepticism makes perfect sense. Yep. Yep. And then they add to that, you know, it's been a year, you know, is it going to feel the same? Are we going to, you know, is there, are we going to get the same types of gigs we got in the past? Are, is everybody still into it as they were? I mean, is everybody in health wise, in, in, in headspace wise? Yeah. You know, we were in a good space when this all, when this all filled down. I mean, that gig we did exactly a year ago was a really fun indoor club gig, you know, in the middle of the winter on March 7th. And, um, you know, we were in our process of revamping our, our song list, getting new stuff going, getting ready for another very, very busy summer. And so everything's up in the air. And I, my goal is to bring it down to the ground and get us a plan and get us moving forward and, and get us, you know, back to business. So I have to figure out where everybody's heads is, head is with regards to rehearsal. We're having a, an interesting conversation about um, should we use this time to try some new material, everybody prepare on your own, or should we take the path of least resistance and just take our very best stuff, dust it off, you know, rehearse, you know, for a good solid weekend or whatever it takes and get back out there and get playing. So all these things are kind of on the table. So, you know, the goal is to really get serious now about a path to reopening. Make right. sense? Yep. I, I, yeah, I, yeah. And it, it's, it was going to be different for you this year anyway, and right. now even more so. Yeah. Right. So, um, I'm going to address this to guys out there like me who were kind of the weekend warrior dad bands and, you know, but really got serious about it and, you know, put the time and effort in to make a band that, you know, has a good place in their, in their community. Yeah. And I personally struggle with remembering that this is not a tech gig. This is not my day job. This is not normal rules of business management and talking to quote unquote, you know, the people on your team yeah. do not apply to this. Right. And, and many of them don't. That's right. Yeah. Many of them don't. Yeah. And I know as we've had conversations about dictatorships versus democracies, which every band seems to have, and there's certainly a lot of opinions about that. I've always said, I will do all the work. I'll do all the booking. I'll do all the finance. I'll do all the promotion. I'll do all the, this, I'll find people, I'll find places for these types of things. But you know, I, 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 I get to play the leader card when I feel I need to play the leader card. Mm. And that process itself is a, is a, is a challenged one. You know, like in general, my horn players who are who are used to being section players, right? You know, they come from yep. big band things. There's a band leader, and, and you know, you play what's in front of you and that type of thing. My rhythm section guys are experienced, you know, very talented guys, and I think you know that, that what they they kind of agree with that to a certain degree, and then they'll push back on it in a certain degree. And the point of all this is, when they push back, it always throws me for a loop. I, I don't I don't really know. If it was a day job, you would sit someone down 
and you would read them, you know, like this is the way it is, right? <laughs> but this is not that. This no. is like you want to keep the group together and you value what they do and you like them as people and you like making music and you've got a good thing going here that you don't, you know, that the power play is definitely not worth it. Right. Um, but it is, I find myself having to, having to check myself and figure out, first, I'm always surprised by it because, it, you know, like, why? And then I kind of cascade down to, these like once you open things up for opinions and then you take opinions or you take suggestions, if you don't take that suggestion, that creates a dynamic, right? Then you have the people who will never suggest anything, right? And then you're like, well, you know, am I really just catering to a band, to a band, you, you know, less than a plurocracy, right? You know, is it just this one person or this other person needs to be heard and I need to find a way to do that? I, I am going to say right up, Front. My skill set for this is not good, and I have to be, look in the mirror a lot. And yep. just, <laughs> you're laughing, but it's actually, it's actually, you know, kind of painful because I like these guys, yeah, and you know, I want to keep, I want to keep our feet moving and keep the ship moving in a certain direction. But my my skill personally of saying, you know, I appreciate that input. I'm going to go with my, you know, with my decision on this, and that the. the grading that inevitably happens about those types of things. And, and it's not like I won't take a, I mean, you know, my band plays a very different repertoire than what I would have chosen if I was making all the choices. And I think I've shared that with you. I've kind of let out the line yeah. and I made a choice a while ago, you know, like, is it better to keep the whole ship going and, you know, have a successful band or is it better to feed my own artistic vision and decisions about this? And, you know, so there are times when I will certainly let it go. It, but it's more about like, like you play in a corporate band that has a leader, right? Yes. And I don't mean to put you on the spot so much about that band, but do you talk to me about that position of you knowing that you've joined a band that has a leader and a guy who makes decisions, seeing things that you need to speak up on or you feel the need to speak up on and how you feel about when, um, when the response back to what you feel and need to speak up on is not necessarily satisfying to you. Um, yeah, I, I, it falls into the category of, I know what I signed up for with mm. this band. It is, it is not a, a democracy in any way, shape or form. You, you know, it, it's, um, and it hasn't evolved past that. And I think maybe that's the difference. Like I've only been in this band a few years. So it's, but it, it has always been this way. And I don't, I'm not saying that it will evolve past that, but some bands do, right? They start out very much like, here's how it is. And then, you know, things move around. The leader says, Hey, will somebody help with this job? Will somebody help? And then suddenly you find yourself in a band where it's like, Oh, well, the leader isn't doing nearly as much as, as they mm. used to do. Right. And so, it, but yeah, with that band, I mean, like our song list, I, I, one of my frustrations, and I mean, I tell, I give Gary crap about this all the time. It's like, he's got me singing songs that I don't, that are not like in my wheelhouse. And it's like, dude, I, I get it. This was on the set list before I joined the band. Someone has to sing it. Somebody has to sing it. <laughs> right. You know, I, I get it. You're the closest option. Right? That's yeah. And he's like, yeah, you just do it. I'm like, but it's, it like, <laughs> it doesn't quite work that way. You know, like my range is my range. I, I can't sing the Bon Jovi tune the way that Bon Jovi can sing it. In fact, Bon Jovi can't sing that song either. I can't remember <laughs> living on a prayer. Right. Yeah. Um, yeah. Like that, when that, even before it modulates, I can't hit the note in the course. It's just it's how it doesn't work you know so but i figured it out it's like well it's definitely staying on the list clearly gary's not going to remove it you know so uh you know he, well, i i talked with whoever our female singer was at the time of we've, we've had two with you know rachel now and it's like all right when that chorus comes you gotta sing with me like do not sing a harmony we both sing the same line we will double each other it'll be great it'll be fine dave the sound guy knows to add extra reverb in that moment we make it happen <laughs> but this was all of my doing, you know, Gary didn't organize any of any of that solving of the problem. It was like, no, you're singing this song. <laughs> like, okay, well, let me, let me solve a problem. So I did, and it works out fine. You know what? It doesn't matter because literally everybody in the room is singing that line. And, 
And they don't hear that I can't sing that line. It doesn't matter, right? Like we deliver it, it works, we entertain, problem solved. But I would still never choose to put that song on a set list, but it's on every every freaking night. Uh, but again, I know what I signed up for. And it's funny, like Gary is just that kind of a guy. He's he's kind of a, a what's the right way to say it? With I mean, <laughs> I, I'm trying to think. He's He's just a jackass about that stuff. And he's happy with that. Like he just will tell you, no, no, that's how it's going to be. And then that's just how it is. But he's also really good at getting gigs for like five or 10 grand a gig. So, so I, I'm empathizing with Gary right now. Right. Cause sometimes I'm just like, I'm going to make this decision and, and you know, it's for the good, I, it's a good thing. But you know, are you comfortable? Everybody happy. Are you comfortable with everyone telling you you're being a jackass about this and just laughing it off and moving on? Because if you are, then you're like right. Gary. But if you're not, well, so <laughs> I I worry about people's happiness. You know, right. and I worry about the harmony, and I worry about that a, a little bit more than I probably and it, and more than I ever did. You know, with day job stuff, right? right. So, so in this, I'm like, you guys are getting one side of my brain will be like, you guys are getting a pretty good deal here. You show up and play. You know, all this work that gets done. You know, and I was clear about that. This is the way that things are. I would say that some people don't remember that I had said it that way. And, and actually, to be fair, you know, Russ didn't, I never sat Russ down and said, you're going to have input. You're not going to have input. So sure. I think, I think that's just me being worn down a little bit, but I, I can get, I can get the idea that a guy makes a decision because a decision needs to be made and he needs to move forward. And he has other things regarding running the band to do. And it's the path of least resistance, whatever, whatever his reason for making the decision he made. Yeah he made it and he's moved on and and I can, I can understand the desire to do that because you can beat some things to death. And sometimes in the beating things to death, uh, it causes more pain. And I mean, what, like for you, what would happen if you say, can we, can we lower the key? You know, can we, can we, can we make it a little more accessible? Uh, yeah, I mean, I if Nick tells me he can't do it. He'll damage his voice if he has to, sure. if he has to do that. I mean, that to me is like, why would I want to damage you guys? Well, yeah, no, 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 no. Like it wasn't, it, I, I solved the problem a different way. I, I think, I think your problem is you want to be friends with yeah. your bandmates at the same level that you just want to lead them. Now I am very friendly with Gary and, and at some level we have become friends, but it is very much within the structure of this is this band that he runs and he is totally okay with him telling someone to do something. And they say, you're a jackass for telling me to do that. And he'll laugh and he'll say, yes, I am. And then we do it right. Like it's how it goes. And you could quit if you want. And nobody wants that. Cause it's a pain in the neck. If somebody quits, including Gary, mm -hmm. like, you know, and he's he, like, I get along with him. We all get along. We joke around together, but it's very clear. Like sometimes it's like, no, this is just how it's going to be, man. And we laugh about it and, and it's just how he is, but he's okay with that. And he's okay knowing that, you know, sometimes I might talk to Vic and be like, gosh, can you imagine Gary did that? And, and he'll be like, yeah, well, that's how Gary is. And we laugh about it, but All he's right, okay so, with that. That's, yep. I think that's so, the difference. So I love Gary and, um, you know, that a leader, that's okay. If he's making decisions that he can defend or, you know, he, you know, he has earned the right. And I, right. I think that's, that's the kind of my thing is I, I spent a fair amount of emotional capital getting buy-in and trust that when something is called out or, you know, it, I, I definitely am like, really, you know, we're going to go around on this here. And um, it's, it's an interesting thing. I think what you just said is very helpful. You know, I definitely, I love all those guys and I want to be their friends, yeah. but sometimes I have to make a decision. And those two things are, it takes a certain personality type to be able to coalesce to Gary's is one type of those personalities. You can just say, yep, you know, uh, I'm going to be an ass on this or yep, yeah, I'm an ass. Uh, yeah. and, you know, have, have yeah. at it. Have at it with a big smile on his face. Like it's, it's yeah. totally okay. That, that's a good skill. Yeah. That's actually a very useful skill and stuff gets done. Decisions get made. Nothing gets left in the lark. And, and if you can do that and not create any uh, lingering friction, remember the, the, the point of all this is frictionless reopening. So right. if he can do that and, and, you know, just be, we love him. Sometimes we hate him, but, even when we hate him, we love him. That's, that's not a bad, that's not a bad but I don't, place for a leader to get a band. I don't think you're that kind of leader. I, from I'm not. What, from what I'm hearing, right. You, you, yeah. you're not okay. If people hate you to love you, you know what I mean? I want, here's a good, here's a good, you're right. I want, 
originally I wanted everybody to be so grateful for the effort I put in, you know, to getting this band going that they would gladly play Springsteen songs all night long. And I thought that was not going to be a problem. Yeah. And I was very much taken by surprise when it was a problem. I mean, I'll give you, you know, the, the, the biggest example is when we first started, I would get there early, set up the PA myself. They would all leave at the end of a gig. I would tear it, you know, and we were playing Wednesday nights oh, until two in the morning for a sucks. year. And, you know, they would be like, nope, gig's over. It's your band. You know, it's your PA. And I was like, all right, you know, here we go. And um, yes. So I, the lesson here is that a, a there are different flavors of good leaders. Sometimes yep. really effective. The guy who can smile at you and tell you no and have you even be griping about it, but not n- not be spinning about it. I think that's a very powerful, useful way to run a dictatorial band. It, it we, is. We, Yeah, but it's not, there are moments where to me, it feels like we are a band of equals, right? You know, like in terms of when we play and that sort of thing, like it, it happens, but I don't think that that can happen if you want to have a dictatorial band I think there need to be moments where that is not the vibe, right? Like when we're on stage together, it's mostly we're just a band playing these tunes. But Gary's driving the bus then too. Like he drives the set list and all of that stuff and it's fine. Right. There's no debate about it. But we're also a bunch of pros. Like we understand in the middle of a freaking wedding is not the time to say, hey, I don't think we should play Brown Eyed Girl. Like you could do that <laughs> afterwards or before. But on stage, when somebody calls Brown Eyed Girl, you, bum, 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 you know, it's two, yep. three, four. And that's You're it. In. You're in. Right. There's no discussion. And so that's how that works on stage. But other than then that level of, of dictation on stage, because it, I believe even in a democracy band, you need someone on stage that's running the set list. So Gary is that, uh, but otherwise, it, you know, it, we are an, a band of equals on stage and we're yeah. a band of equals for the most part when we're like backstage eating dinner, waiting for, you know, the people yep. to finish with their speeches and all of that stuff. That's fine. But when it comes to making decisions about the band, there is zero question and it's is clearly communicated from the top down that we are not a band of equals and it's totally okay. And the thing is, everybody's okay with it, including and especially Gary. Hmm. Well, I, yeah, that's it. A, a leader needs to be comfortable in their own shoes. That's it. And yeah. So I, I would say I do many things well, the desire to be empathetic and have people's emotional buy-in to things that I want that they might not want. Yeah. That's a, that's a challenging thing. And, you know, definitely. It's tough. A, yeah. Because Gary doesn't wait for buy-in. Yeah. He just does it. That, and that's yeah. the, that's the difference here, but it still works, you know? Yeah. Yeah. It's well, you fine. get the benefit of decisions get made and, yes. and you know, yeah. So anyway, so back to my original premise yeah, was so I, I, I want to have a frictionless reopening. I need to, we need to rebuild the bond. We need to rebuild the trust. We need to rebuild the show. We need to rebuild quite a bit here. And, um, and that's a path that we're going to go on. So we have a meeting okay. coming up. Originally, I just was going to have the rhythm section come to this meeting because a lot of the nitty gritty of these things and, you know, the essence of the meeting was largely going to be about approach to material, which largely is um, a rhythm section discussion. You know, singers largely choose their own songs in my band. And, you know, there, <laughs> there are that some sounds so nice. That <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you know, but, th- but then, you know, some people said, I'd like some input too. And, you know, that we've taken a little bit of a left turn, but anyway, and, and then, I was given some feedback. Well, you know, if this is our first time getting together and, you know, the zoom isn't going to do it, let's get everybody together. And so, you know, my first reaction was, uh, I, you know, I have a plan here where we're going to do the rhythm section, but I want to be frictionless. So, you know, inclusive. So took the, took the, um, note, um, invited everybody came up with a, um, outline that I've shared with a couple of people who might want a stake in the outline of what we're going to talk about. Uh, got a little bit of feedback. I got two guys who can't come on the day that we're coming, maybe one guy, but, but yeah. possibly two guys. And I'm going to give it them the outline and let them just send in and also invite them to zoom in on that day if they want to. And we're going to start the discussion. The discussion has a couple of high points. You know, we have an existing business that we want to get back to business. When is everybody comfortable rehearsing again? 
Um, that's a that's a big part of things. And you know, what about I? I don't know if everybody's going to be ready to do two hour, three hour. It was certainly not three hour shows in our band. Two hours and less, we play straight through. Three two hours and more, we take a break. I think you know, for these first couple of shows, you know, given my experience for a couple of things, just doing things solo, I think we're gonna need to take that break, you know, on the hour and, you know, and catch our breath a little bit. Um, but asking everybody how they feel about that is everybody's heads in the same place, everybody in their head in the same place about how much they want to play. Um, yeah. You know, one guy had an, had a position. Um, I don't know if we're going to be able to do back to backs, you know, right away when we get, when we get mm. going. But again, this is the thing, a 10 piece band. And this is where I, you know, get a little bit stuck. It's like one guy can't do, do we pause the whole band and nine other guys don't get to make money two days in a row because, you know, trying to do these things. So I guess, you know, to me. I have an idea for you. Go. Simplify this. I think you're, you're, you're talking about so many theoreticals that it is almost impossible not to have 25 opinions from 10 people. Right. There, there's very little concrete here. And I wonder if it's not better to just look at the concrete. Right. So start with when, you know, what's the first booking look like? You've got something in September. Okay, great. Send that out to the band. Is everybody comfortable playing this in September? Assuming we're all vaccinated by then. Mm. It, right. And get buy in. You'll get yay or nay. Like, this is not a, how do you feel? Tell me this is, are you good? Like I got the person on the phone. Let me know immediately. Are we good? Yes, we're good. Okay, great. I've got that. Now a booking comes in for August. Okay. Is everyone comfortable playing in August? And it'll be a yay or nay, you know, and you can have, assuming everybody's vaccinated, if you want to put that out there, which is, it sounds yeah. like at the moment, a safe assumption, of course, anything could change, right? But, you know, you, you, you're you asked, you're asking a question, you know, the answer to, right? You, you, based on what we know, you can assume that by the end of June, everybody in your band has ha- had the option of being vaccinated, right? So mm-hmm. great. Okay. Sounds good. And, and now, okay. So now you get a, a, a call for a booking this, the next night in September, like the night after the gig that you have booked, let's say you have a Friday book, you get a call for a Saturday, put it out there. Everybody good playing with this Saturday. When seven people say yes, the, the two of the three that haven't yet answered that were sort of on the fence about playing two nights in a row, they're going to, they're probably going to say, yeah, you know what? Let's try it. There's no harm in trying. I'm a big fan of, you know, living in the practical and when managing people, because I'm terrible at managing people, by the way, <laughs> but I've, I've learned that people don't like to have to commit to something that is concrete forever. You'll remember when the pandemic started, they said, we just need to stay at home for two weeks. And right. here was Dave saying, I can't tell you how many times I've made a permanent decision at work and told everybody it was just a two week experiment. I don't think mm-hmm. we're just at home for two weeks, folks. Right. Because this is, this is like a tried and true methodology. You say, let's try it for two weeks. It gets past the change resistance. It gets past all of that stuff. And by the end of two weeks, guess what? People don't want to go back. You know why? Cause it's different than what they just did for two weeks. So now that's not so, so much the same with the pandemic and the isolation, but that's a little different. Uh, but the, you know, having that just concrete stuff, instead of saying, instead of painting all the for instances, just paint with reality and be like, okay, here's this gig, here's this gig. And yes, there might be a gig at some point where, you know, okay, well now what about the Thursday night before that Friday and Saturday? And you got four people that say, definitely not. Then you got to go back and say, Hey, we're, we, we can't make that night work. Let's, you know, what do you got the next weekend? What do you have the weekend before? And you, you know, you sort of balance that out. But I like I feel like that's a better path to the frictionless reopening than trying to paint what perfect looks like because you'll never get consensus. I I think if you asked me what perfect looks like, I would not be able to give you a concrete answer for me, let alone for anybody else, <laughs> right? It's like, well, wh- what do you mean? Like, you want to rehearse next week? Mm, mm, maybe not, but you know, like tell, tell me what's going on and then let's do it. And my guess is most people are going to react similarly. So that's my idea. I like it. Yeah. Yeah. Under advisement, Dave. Under advisement. There you go. Yeah. All right. One last thing for you. Yeah. The, the conversation about, should we just dust off our best stuff and Mm. get back out there versus, you know, we've got a little time Here's an interesting, we're going to go out way out into left field here. 
the desire to refresh your song list. If your band plays, uh, let's just say, six to eight times a month and you've got some fans, do you, is the desire to refresh a song list about, about musicians' boredom or is it about, is it about truly moving things forward? I mean, do, I guess the question is, do you really need, if you've got a great song list and it works and you've got a great show and it works, what do you think that real, like you're playing Bon Jovi, you're playing some pretty classic rock in, in, in your, in your band. You'll add something every once in a while, right? Yep. But in general, like we've spent the last 22 years trying to add, you know, 10 to 12 new songs a year of which three or four might stick in the big scheme of things. Um, do you think, do you think that that's, that's a healthy thing? You know, is it better to just keep refining your show, refining your show, maybe add one or new, one or two new songs a year, which I know many bands that do. Yeah. Or do you think, you know, do you think the, I, we used, I used to think that it was a good thing because it connected our band. Like we went through this process yes. of looking forward to refreshing, you know, learning material together, you know, vibing on the material together. It was a point of um, creative, connection I felt um, for, for my whole group. I know bands that just play the same and they're successful bands. They've got a great show. People love that show. They rarely touch that show. What do you think? Um, I've done both. When I was in the blues rock trio down in Texas, I, I know that I was going to say, I don't think, but I know that we didn't learn a, a new song in five years because our bass player was so sick I mean, he says he was so sick of playing the same songs for years and years, but we went out and played him and we had a blast, you know, every weekend. But he said, I, the next song that we learn has to be this particular ZZ Top song. It was moving on down the line. And we heard Denzel talk about moving on down the line for years. And then finally Murray was like, I learned moving on down the line. And it was like, great. And then we learned like another song after that, but we had been playing together for five years, literally the same song list that existed when I auditioned for the band. So I have no, I, I mean, I think it was a song list that had existed for five years prior to that, you know, and, um, and that's my point. Did any booker or any fan ever say, no. Are you guys ever going to add anything new? Well, no, but we had probably a hundred songs on the list. Yeah. And, and so every gig, I mean, there were some songs we would play at every gig, I, I would say, but, um, but by and large, you know, we would mix it up, but also it was a blues rock trio. You know, it was mostly about Murray and, and his guitar to be quite frank. I mean, he's mm -hmm. an amazing guitar player. And, uh, and so it was, it was, you know, in that sense, it was a jam band, if you will. I mean, I don't know how many people would call a jazz band or a blues band or a blues rock band, a jam band, even though every one of them is improvising all night long, you know, it, it, it like, it wasn't in that jam band realm, but it, in, in the sense of how the, the band was structured, it, every song was open and Murray would take these solos and we would riff off him, And you know, that's how it went. So that's what people came out to see. So, um, so it, it like the songs almost didn't matter. And a lot of them were the same anyway. I mean, there was there were a lot of one four five kind of blues things and at different tempos, and it was either a shuffle or a funk thing or mm -hmm. you know whatever. And we had some originals. Honestly, the originals were the most uh, eclectic tunes that we had. The rest of the tunes were all kind of in the same little you know Stevie Ray Vaughan, Hendrix, Clapton, you know Albert Collins boxes that you know that just sort of make up that canon of music. So, so that, that band was the same, literally the same song list for five years and it was fine, but like fling, we were constantly adding new tunes. We were adding originals as fast as we were adding covers, you know, it, it may be at different things at different times, but over the course of a year, that's how that would go. The same was go figure my college band. But my uh, question is why are you doing it for your own edification? Are you doing it because it's better for your show? Are you doing it? You know, good. I mean, that was, that was always yeah. kind of my thought is like, we're always trying to find the perfect songs. You know, you have, you know, you have an A list, but you want an A plus list, right? You have an A plus list, you want an A plus plus list. Like, what so are it the depends songs? on the, on the purpose of the band. Like Fling was playing to the same people regularly. So evolving was as much evolving the, the song list and adding to it was as much for us as it was for the audience so that there would be something new 
for them. And they would notice that, right? Like that. Oh yeah. You guys added this song. Like, that's great. You know, and we would retire old things and then bring them back after a while. So, so it was definitely, that was the reason for that. But for Uptown where you're not playing for the same people over and over again, you know, it's literally a different crowd every time Mm -hmm. because it's a different private function. Um, the same song list works fine. We, we added last year, we added quite a few tunes. We added like jet airliner and mama don't dance. And, um, I don't know. It just came up on the list. Oh, it's probably, maybe it was when we were thinking because we brought Rachel in to replace Kelly and. So you took the opportunity with a new voice to kind of. Yeah. Some things that. Yeah. 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 And, and Gary, I mean, I think like uh, Jet Airliner and Mama Don't Dance, Gary was like, wait a minute, like, you know, Dave and Marty sing harmonies great together. We should add some songs that highlight that, you know, and so that's where like, like Mama Don't Dance came from. We also added that one headlight, that Wallflowers tune. Gosh. Great tune. Oh my gosh. I've never seen a song die on the vine so terribly. It's very hard. It's it's one of those delicate grooves that... Can't overdo it. And you can't underdo it. it. I love that song. I've tried to play it in a few different things. It's but. a great song, but it's not the right song for a party band. It it mm. was like it was terrible, terrible. We literally cleared the room one night with it. It was like, all right, well, Weird. that's off the list. <laughs> and um, um, let me ask a question: Was that a, was that a Gary? We're going to play this song. Was there any conversation about this? Not might not be right for a party band. I don't think anybody brought that up. It was just because it's not how it works. It's like here, learn these songs. It's like okay, yeah, no problem. Got it. Yeah. So, but we're always <laughs> learning new songs in that band because of weddings, right? Requests. People, yeah, the, every wedding comes with three built-in requests, and they're usually songs that aren't already on our list. So, and some a, of them stick. Song like "Dancing in the Moonlight" that stuck. It was like, oh, yeah. we killed that. I mean, that's talk about a hard song. That's a weird one to do, yeah. but it just so happened that that particular lineup did a great job with that song. It was like, oh, yep, that's in the list. Okay, great, good to go. So we actually should have that conversation about why some songs just don't, don't work. Yeah. You know, like what happens? Is it, is it the subtlety? And th- you know, this is to me is all about so much of groove is in people's hands it's in the drummer's hands and the bass player's hands. It's mm-hmm. in the, you know, the, it, and it's a very subtle thing. You can be playing all the right notes at the right tempo and it's still not be right. And you know, what, what is the magic that's not happening when it's yeah. in your hands? Well, and it, I mean, it's as much about the, the groove and the feel as it is the sound, right? Like, yeah. y- you know, that, that particular drum set might not sound good on this song, right? Yeah. Like, you know, the snare drums tuned too high, too low. It just doesn't fit. Same could be said about the bass player sound, the guitar player sound, like, you, you know, keyboard players tend to be the ones that, that cop sounds the best, but even that, like live things don't translate the same way that they do mm. on a re- studio recording. So, you know, is it the production of it? Is it uh, the, the fact that there were four bass players on this song, you know, like who knows? So, yeah. Good um, conversation. We, we yeah. should, we should definitely have that one. Yeah. Yeah, for sure. Yeah. I don't, I, I don't know that there's a magic to it. It's just like, you just got to try it and then that's it. So, yeah. All right. Well, wish me luck on this frictionless. Our conversation will be in April. I hope to get the band in rehearsal somewhere by May. Um, that's, you know, Good. right now, that's what I'm projecting is, yeah. is you know, we're going to hit it again. If we can play in June, but, you know, the problem is, is a lot of the things that we play to play in June need to be planning right now. And people are kind of, you know, s- stuck. So I think the things that will happen in May and June will be kind of ad hoc opportunities. Last minute things. I think that'll yeah, be not, true for a lot of None us. of the big... Yeah. yeah, none of the big require a lot of planning, require a lot of selling, you know, sponsors or selling, right. selling, you know, art and wine booths or that type of thing. I think that type of stuff isn't going to happen until the fall. But um, right. hopefully some things will happen. I, the, the acoustic thing, I'm going up to the Bay Area uh, this weekend and I'm playing a big winery with a really nice facility. So they have a terrace. And they have a huge lawn. And, you know, the band usually plays on the lawn. When I've played there acoustically, I play on the terrace to a smaller group. But what they've done is they are doing a a food service for socially distanced tables Mm. on the terrace. And then they're allowing people to make reservations for the lawn. And it's quite spaced out. So you can make a reservation of up to six people for your area. They drop a cone, you know, in all the different areas. You know, so say they have 20 room for 20 groups of of up to six. If someone makes the reservation for just two, then that, that particular cone will only have two people, which I think is probably more, you know, how many groups of six yeah. you, know, you got to get that together. And, you know, people aren't really doing that, but, um, 
So uh, I'm looking forward to playing, you know, for probably 80 to 100 people this weekend. Um, first time, you know, up in the Bay Area playing, first time outdoor up in the Bay Area playing. So we'll, you know, we'll see how it goes. I hope it doesn't rain. That's possible. But sure. Yeah. But, yeah. Uh, yeah. So, so the, the reopening is starting and, you know, it's, it's exciting. It's daunting. I have this pit in my stomach. It's not going to feel the same that it felt before. And it felt so good before. And what, what would, the, what would that even be like when you have something that fits like a, a comfortable glove? If, you know, if one guy is like, you know, I just can't keep up this pace anymore. If you yeah. have, you know, whatever it's going to be, that would just be so heartbreaking if it didn't feel the same. Cause it, you know, it was just, we, we've had a year robbed of us, you know, yeah. taken, taken from us, you know, while, while we were on a pretty good streak. Yeah. I, I think there's going to be a lot of that. I, you know, but, but all these things are opportunities too. Right. Like maybe it's the, you know, the band doesn't work again and the way that it used to. And so you retool things and then yeah. go a different path. And then, you know, in five years, check in and let's see, you know, where we are. I don't know. Like I Everything's think, up in the air. You know, anything can change. Yeah. Well, we talk all about my band today. I mean, you know, I, I haven't checked with you in too much detail. I know your various groups, like you even, even, You've been the theater guy, you know, for a, for a good year. You found your way through that. You've got your 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 party man fling. You said you guys got together and you had a great time playing. But that's that might be a challenge situation coming out of this. I don't know. You you what what do you want to have happen in the next three to six months for your for your band life? I'm looking forward to what Bitter Pill is going to be like uh, as as things emerge. I I think that band. I mean, I love what we do and when we play together, it's fantastic. And everybody in that band is really focused on just rocking this summer together. Mm. So, um, yeah, That's cool. I, I think, yeah, that, that, that band is, is, I mean, it's great songs and people love it. It, it really like, there's, it's a magic little mix. So that's the thing that, that I'm really looking forward to and, and really excited I'm forward about to hearing more about it. Yeah. 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 I mean, we had two really good gigs, back, you know, at the, at the end of the the fall kind of thing, outdoor gigs. And it was like, okay, yeah, we're all into this. Like, let's, let's keep this happening. It was great. So that's well, cool. yeah, no, it was a nice little one door, one door closes, one door opens. Right? That's how it is. Yeah. That's, that's right. That's always, you know, well, I mean like anything where you're, it's not a full-time thing. People are not relying on it, you know, as their, and I'm, I'm talking in general. I know some of the musicians I play with definitely rely on it as their, their income. And this year's, been ter terrible, you know, for that, for obvious reasons, but in general playing in bands, people aren't relying on it for their full-time income. And so, you know, all those things that can impact your commitments in life, work, family, you, you know, lots of health, lots of other things can cause bands to be, you know, in flux, which is, sure. um, it's just how it goes. But like you said, you know, opportunity knocks and there's, there's other options. And like, like I said, a bitter pill, what a great, great project. So yeah, I'm cool that you're excited stoked about, about that. Yeah, for sure. We'll hear yeah. more about it. Yep. Hey, one last thing today is, uh, we got a nice, um, message on our Facebook page from, I think we should save Western that in Australia. We should save that for next week. It's you sure. Yeah, 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 yeah. There's, there's way too much to dig into there. It's about in ears specifically for an acoustic set, but some, some, some details that I think are worth going through, especially because it made me start to think about what you've been fighting with, with your in ears. And I have some ideas. So, um, well, <laughs> I saw my responses to him. Right? I did, but I also, but they, they resonated with me because I have had it recently at the theater. I had similar issues with like mud in my ears, um, sound mud, not actual someone pouring mud in there, but, uh, but I, and I've solved them. And so I think there might be more to this than, uh, than I had thought about with you before. So, so I, I we'll, we'll do that next week. We'll, we'll talk Fair about, enough. we'll answer Matt's question and, um, and we'll dig a little bit into to some of that other fun stuff. So, Sounds good. Hey, I'm um, sorry about, I'm sure you're getting some background noise here. So there's a bunch of construction outside, um, houses being built in my neighborhood and, nice. and, uh, 
So yeah, I guess it's nice, but it, I'm, now everybody who's listening is a part of that ride. So. <laughs> it's, it's not too bad. In fact, the noise, if you just heard construction noise, I thought that that was somebody backing down my driveway. So they, maybe, uh, yeah, I don't know, maybe it's, maybe it is coming through. That wasn't somebody backing down your driveway, folks. That was at least. They're making a new driveway. <laughs> ah, yeah, exactly. Yeah, there you go. All right. Well, thanks for listening, folks. Thanks for hanging out with us. Send your stuff in. Feedback at giggabpodcast.com. What's your band doing to make your reopening frictionless? How, how much did we overthink it? Do you have a better answer? Let us know. What's the other thing we, we like to say, no matter what? No, that's what that's Always what to perform. Yeah, always. always. Frictionlessly.